And we're here with Marina Marr. Marina, what is up? What's going on, Evan? How are you doing? Good. I'm glad we get to finally do this. I've, uh, I've asked you to be on before, and obviously things get busy. Uh, I'm, you have I'm a like life. 90% sure I like bronchitis when you asked me to be on. Yes, that's right. You were super sick. I, super I felt so sick. bad. I felt so bad. Um, that, that was before being sick was like the new trendy thing. That was like oh, when being yeah. sick wasn't that big a deal. Uh, but now obviously being sick is a huge deal. Um, how's that been for you, dodging COVID? I'm um, pretty good. I've gotten tested, I don't know, a handful of times. I got married, so obviously we all got tested before that. Um, luckily, everyone came out uh, clear. So, so far, so good. Hopefully, the cases keep dropping and we keep kind of like getting back to normal life, whatever How that did may the, be. Exactly. How did the wedding go with, with the COVID restrictions? It was good. We postponed our like big, big wedding. We're supposed to have like a 200-person wedding. And um, – so we postponed like that celebration to next year still wanted to get legally married. So we did like a tiny 20 person wedding, just like family and close friends, um, like on a beach in Connecticut. And it was honestly like, I'm glad, I'm so glad we did it that way because it's one, like less pressure for like, cause you know how crazy people can be like on, on wedding days. So it was less pressure, which I actually liked, um, like got to do my vows, everything perfectly. So I'm actually happy how it went down. I can't wait to celebrate with everyone next year, hopefully, knock on wood. Um, but yeah, 20 people, we all got tested. It was, it was, it was an unbelievable day of my life. Like I, I'm so happy how it turned out. It looked like a ton of fun, just the pictures I saw uh, from like Facebook and social media. Also, the coolest part was you got shout-outs from the Bruins, too. You had the videos uh, of them congratulating you, if I remember correctly. Yeah, I had no idea that was even happening. And uh, shout out to Les Dunbar. He runs uh, your sports memorabilia store who has like all the exclusive rights to like Marcia and Berger and whatever. And so my now husband hit him up um, and he got to get like Berger on a Marsh and I think the brusque was supposed to do one, but like they were in the bubble. Like, and so seeing that, uh, like being caught off guard, with like your favorite people, like doing a video for you. Um, it was just so special. And obviously Bergeron's my guy. And so um, hearing what he had to say was special. So I was, I was thrown off guard, but it was an unbelievable moment and I couldn't be like happier with it. Yeah, no, that looked so cool. Uh, especially with Bergeron, because you were the weekend at Bergies. Yeah. So obviously, and you've met him and, and, and you've met all yeah, the people. He's but unbe- show you unbelievable guy. And like to do that during a bubble, like in the middle of, in the bubble, like in the middle of a playoff race, like just shows to go what, what kind of a guy he is. Yeah. Oh, great, great guy. Um, and that, that is, again, uh, so cool. And it was so cool to see that. I was like, you know what? Damn right. They sent those videos. Hell yeah. <laughs> um, all right. So the big news uh, of this, uh, this Tuesday, because we're recording this Monday morning, but Tuesday, uh, is uh, news from your colleague, RA, Rear Admiral, uh, tweeting yesterday, a big bombshell right before the Patriots game, right as the Red Sox uh, told Renicky that uh, take a hike. Uh, R.A. tweets this bomb, look for the Bruins to trade Tory Krug's rights tomorrow, as in Monday, to a team looking for exclusive negotiations before unrestricted free agency opens on October 9th. Colorado, Florida, Vegas, and Detroit are among the suitors. Very interesting report. Um, it's Monday at 1030, so it has not happened yet. What is the likelihood that this happens? I mean, we all knew that this was going to be the likely outcome. It's just like seeing it in text and like hearing it. It's just like so painful. I mean, Tory Crew gave us what, like nine years? Um, eight or, I think eight full, but yeah, nine total. Nine total, eight full. And so it's sad first and foremost. Like I completely understand why it's happening. Um, Krug bet on himself, signed some team-friendly deals, and like now it's his time to cash in. Um, so it sucks in the fact that, that like – he was the longest tenured Boston athlete without a championship. It's, it hurts more that they lost in 2019. Now you're losing crew. It just, I'm so fucking sad about it, but I completely understand why they're doing it. Like flat cap. You can't, he's going to be 30 or he is 30. Like you can't sign him to a, a monster deal because you got to think about like the future. I get that. But in the locker room, he's such a leader, just like everything he's done. He's a power play specialist. It, First and foremost, flat out sucks. Like, he's such a great guy. And so you want him to get his bag. I've said that I don't know how many times in the last, like, six months. Like, great guy. 
I'm not going to be too upset over it, but it sucks seeing one of those guys go. It sucks because Krug is, as you said, great guy, amazing locker room presence, fun as hell to watch on the ice. I mean, just like your prototypical Boston underdog athlete, you know, short, yep. un, you know, under, underdog through and through, kind of like a Pedroia, uh, just absolutely, you know, a, a legend here. Um, and again, you said it, this makes that 2019 cup loss that much worse because this guy would have not only had the cup, but that hit on Robert Thomas would be, yep. you know, insane. Uh, you know, it would be in Boston lore. Same with Chara's uh, playing through a broken job, but Krug's hit on Robert Thomas. I mean, there'd be statues of it. There'd be pictures and bars. There, you know, it would be incredible. And 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 because that loss, he doesn't get that. And he, sh- you know, it stinks because he should have got. There, there are two things. It would have been awesome to see him get in Boston, a cup, and money. And right now, the Bruins are not in the position to offer him a long-term deal with that kind of money because he's in that weird crew that's not the veteran core and isn't the next generation. You, know, you have the veteran core of Bergeron, Marshawn, Chara, Krejci, Rask, and then you have the younger core of McAvoy, Pasternak, DeBrusque, and Krug's kind of in the middle. And you mm-hmm. saw Coyle's the same age or, or close to it, and they only gave him five years uh, this past right. year. Krug wants way more, as he should, and he wants way more money than they could give him, as he should, go get it somewhere else. Go get the bag somewhere else and go win somewhere else because I don't think, I don't think by year four or five, I don't know if the Bruins are still going to be contenders in the same way they are now. Um, so I think going somewhere else, good, it's good for him, I think. Right, and it's definitely going to be interesting to see what the Bruins do this offseason because it sets the stage for years to come. Like, are, are we going to kick the can and, like, say, hey, we're going to go younger? Like, we've had our last, cha- like, real chances at a cup run. Like, um, these guys are getting older. Maybe deal with Krejci. Or are you going to go the reverse option? Are you going to get Krejci some help? Are you going to try and expand this window? Because I'd hate to say it, but the window is closing. These guys are getting older. Who knows if Char is going to be back? Like, so – it, this offseason is really going to tell me what Don Sweeney believes in. Um, you'd like to see Krejci get some help. I think we've been saying it for eight fucking years. Oh, right. But I think this offseason, more than anything else, it's either going to be prove it to me, Don, or like, what are we doing? Well, that's the thing. And I think you saw Cam Neely sort of say that in his exit interview. was like, we need to be brutally honest. Like, we actually need to look at our roster and say, do, you know, is it good enough? And can we contend, uh, you know, and not have to rebuild or retool? I don't think they have to retool. I I don't think they have to rebuild. I don't think you have to start the whole thing from the ground up again. There's no No. point in doing that. But I think there needs to be additions made. And what's good, though, and I think what's good for the Bruins, is you're going to lose Krug no matter what. Right. You were going to lose him. You know, they bought into having him for one final year for one final push the cup with him. And that was smart because you're bet, you, you have a better chance at the cup with Tory Krug on your team. Now you could get something for him. Now, I don't know what you're going to get. It's probably no higher than a, a third, second or third round pick. But it's still something. It's something. And that's not bad. And that's not bad. And, 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 and part, you know, part of me hopes that some, I, I don't know why teams would do this. I don't know why a team would agree to trade for his rights. I guess you get exclusive negotiations. I think of it like Philly, like Kevin Hayes. I don't think Philly was a destination that Kevin Hayes saw himself at, but they wanted him. They got a deal done, and now Kevin Hayes is kind of flourishing in Philly. So uh, Joel Edmondson, same thing in Montreal, got traded from Carolina. So I think if you're a team, like Ari mentioned, Colorado, Florida, Vegas, Detroit, like you got to be sure that Tory is going to sign. Um, See, I think Detroit's the easy one. That's the layup. Detroit, I mean, that's the, yeah, hometown like every, boy. But then, but then you look at they just got Mark Stahl and his cap hit, and it's like, what are you doing? That made no sense to me. I didn't understand what they were doing with that. Um, I guess the veteran leadership aspect of it, but I just didn't quite get it. You know, I mean, I don't think Mark Stahl is is someone who's going to transform your you know defensive core, especially for his cap hit. Right. Um, but to me. Detroit makes the most sense. You know, you have Blashill, who was his coach um, in the USHL. You have uh, the hometown connections. 
You have every they have the cap space for it. They and also I could, could see, be. I could see them throwing a C on his jersey in two seconds. Yes, that is the big one, and I also think it kind of like the Chara signing in Boston back in two thousand six. Uh, but also, I could see them contending uh, by the time the end of that contract hits, uh, or by you know year four or five of it. Whereas the Bruins might be going for a rebuild at that time, and then going, yep. why do we still have this contract on our books? So. I mean, the other ones are interesting. Vegas is interesting. I mean, that makes them an immediate Stanley Cup favorite. I just don't know how they're going to fit it. Like, if Tori they go for back, everyone. I don't know how they're... S- somehow, right. somehow Vegas goes for, like, every big fish. They, yeah. They're printing money out there. It's like they're stealing money from the casinos, having all that money to sign. Guys, Colorado, scary how much cap space they have. Tory Krug with Kale McCarr on his right. <laughs> I mean, Jesus. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that would be the best power play in the league. You know, you'd have Krug, you'd have Makar, you'd have McKinnon, Landis, Cog, Rant. I mean, that would be insane. <laughs> that's, um, that's that'd be literally unfair. That would be. I mean, that makes they're already Stanley Cup favorites uh, for next season. I mean, how does that not make them Stanley Cup favorites? Uh, you know, automatically. So that's very interesting uh, with the with the report of him being traded. If he does get traded Monday, so you're here, if you're hearing this late, you're like, why are they discussing whether or not it's going to happen? Because um, it may, may have already happened, uh, but. We all knew Krug was going to go. We all knew Krug was gone. And it's sad because La- – it's funny. The exit interviews in 2019, uh, at the end of 1819, uh, it was, you know, I want to be here. I want to be in, in, with the Bruins. I think it's going to happen. You know, I want to make this my home. And he did. And I think he still does, you know. But as, as the season wore on, it's just kind of declined. And the cap then went flat. Yeah. And that's sort of, you know, it's all, he's always says he wants to be in Boston. He said in his exit interview this year, you know, I haven't thought of any other teams. I really haven't. I believe him. He's an honest guy. I really do believe he didn't look at any other teams, didn't focus on any other teams. You know, he didn't stare across the Red Wings bench and go, damn, how would I look at the Red Wings? Yeah, I think it really, I saw Tory Krug, um, but it is sad to see him go. So I want to talk a little bit about his career in general here because we hit on it a little bit. Uh, because I guess this is the Tory Krug Bruins eulogy. I thought this would come Damn later. <laughs> oh, now it's so coming, sad. <laughs> now, it's co- now it's coming in uh, late September. I didn't expect this to be happening now, uh, especially with COVID. But well, that's um, the other thing is that like people on Twitter have been like, "How could Sweeney like let him walk for nothing?" It's like, dude, like no one planned a pandemic. No one, no one accounted for a pandemic. <laughs> the COVID nineteen wasn't in the off season plans no. for this year. Also sucks, and I think he'll get his moment. But it sucks he doesn't get his, you know, last game as a Bruin at the Garden. Right. Like, he didn't know his last game at the Bru- last game as a Bruin at the Garden was uh, not, you know, the playoffs. It was, you know, back in March, had no idea. His last game as a Bruin was up in Toronto in a bubble. Like, it's just weird ending. Not mm-hmm. fitting at all, in my opinion. And so, sucks to see him go. Uh, sucks to see him go, whether he gets traded on Monday or not. Because uh, we know he's probably going to go. Uh, but his career, what was your favorite Tory Krug moment? I know I'm putting you on the spot, but what was your defining favorite Krug moment? I mean, there's a ton. Um, obviously, the earliest memory is him scoring against the Rangers. Um, I forget what game it was in the 2013 Cup run. That was kind of his stamp. Like, you know what? I'm here. I'm gonna fight for. I'm gonna fight to be on this team. Um, I remember that cup run and like what he did. Um, there's, there's just the way he's dealt with the power play over the years. Like the Bruins have a hit or miss power play um, at times, and the way he completely turned it over. Um, we're, you're gonna have to, you're gonna need Charlie McAvoy and Macros like to step up in that department. But just the way he transformed that power play and the way he played bigger than himself and the way he stuck up for teammates despite being one of the smallest guys on the teams. It's just little moments like that. There's nothing like crazy that s- steps out to me like any one moment. Um, the overtime win against uh, Minnesota where he had that fun yes. belly, like, <clears throat> yeah. So there's just like there's just like those little moments that you've come to appreciate over the last eight years, and he's truly like, I don't know how to say it, like that that locker room is going to miss him. They are going to miss him big. And that's the thing, and he's always been sort of the bridge between you know instead of maybe going to a guy like Chara for advice, you go to Krug. It's easier. Right. He's younger. He's closer to you. Uh, I can't imagine going to Chara for advice. Going, hey Z, uh, what do you think about this? And, 
he's just, you know, a foot taller than you and you're looking down at you. But um, I think when it comes to favorite Tory Krug moments, you mentioned the Rangers, all the goals against Lundquist and the Rangers, which came out of nowhere. I mean, this yeah. kid just jumps onto the scene and his score goals from the blue line at ease. I mean, the hit on Robert Thomas, obviously, is the top one. That was just insane. Um, it's funny. I remember watching from above him with tangled up with David Perron in front of the net. And his helmet comes off. They don't call anything. He's pissed. And you can tell. Skating net, you watch him go from that net, and you're like, he is going to do something. Mm-hmm. Whether you score a goal or put a guy into next week, like he's going to do something. And he did. Poor Robert Thomas, young guy. You know, turns up the boards, has no idea, gets killed. Uh, but I think what's most impressive with Krug is he was really a part of that crew, a big part of that crew that saved the Bruins from having to rebuild in that, that weird 50, you know, 14, 15, 16, 17 year time frame right. um, where, you know, you had the turnover with Claude, you had Cassidy come in who at the time was shaky. I mean, you didn't know what you were getting with Cassidy. He had a terrible time in Washington, even though it was years since it still wasn't a definite, they were going to do anything. They looked old. They looked boring. I mean, you remember those teams. I mean, it was just a lot of shots on net, not a lot of goals. And Krug was a big part of changing that. You know, it was part of the power play. It was, you know, the the flashy passes to, to Pasternak. It was Cassidy sort of utilizing his offensive prowess and then putting him with a guy like Carlo um, after the time with McQuaid to sort of let him do those things and give him right. the leeway to do those things. And I think Krug took it and ran with it. And I think that is such an important part of – Krug's legacy in Boston was he sort of helped save the Bruins from rebuilding and kind of gave himself more time in Boston. And if you ask Brandon Carlo, I mean, without Tori Krug, who knows like where his development is at? I know you have Chara and some other veteran guys, but I think uh, Tori was really his rock throughout uh, his career in, in Boston. And I know Brandon had like high, highly, I forgot what he said at, in his exit interviews, but he had nothing but good things to say about Tori. Um, so it's it's sad, but I understand the direction they're going in. And like I said, Krug's been betting on himself all of his life, and so good for him to go for going and getting his bag. That's the thing. Get the money. I mean, right. get your money. And I think that that's something the Bruins fans are gonna have a really tough time understanding. They're gonna have a. I mean, you know, Sweeney's gonna get a lot of crap for this. I guarantee you, in 2020, 21, the power play is not going to be as as good. They're, they're gonna have dry spells. You know, they're gonna go like you know, oh for twenty over like four, you know, six games. And people are going, oh, my God, if they had Tory Krug, look at what they'd be doing. But you have to understand that long-term might be the right thing to do, especially because McAvoy is your defenseman who's going to get all the money in a few years, and you right. want to have the space for that. You don't want to have and, – and it sucks because – and this goes for the business aspect of the game. Krug is a great guy. Awesome player, so fun to watch, fan favorite. It sucks talking about him in the sense like, oh, in three or four years, the Bruins might right. not, you know, he might not be worth it on the roster. When in reality, like, I, it'd be awesome to see him back. I mean, it really would. And I think everyone wants him back. But um, it's sort of been like, and I said this earlier, a year of like getting people ready for him to go. Um, and also what's crazy is after uh, the game five loss, it was not just Krug's possible last game, but Chara's. I mean, you remember after game five, people acting, you know, Doc Emmerich gave him a eulogy uh, pretty much on air. I, I was like, like, what does he know that we don't? That was what I was saying. Like, I remember I was, I was running upstairs to do the press conferences, and I, heard, I stopped and I was like, what? Like, I thought maybe it could be his last game, but, like, did he talk to Chara? Like, I mean, he just – I mean, maybe he was just saying something nice, but it sounded like he knew something. Um, but do you th- what do you think the Bruins do with Chara? I think it's very interesting. Um, so I think it's Bruins are boss for Chara. I don't see him playing on any other team except the Bruins. Um, but like I said earlier, like this off season for Don Sweeney is really going to be like where like it's going to tell us what what he thinks the Bruins are will be in the future. And so I personally think that Chara does another your deal for cheap money um he has like that documentary he just dropped out of the clouds and like just watching that and seeing him in the hospital after game four and all that stuff um so i think charlie will be back it'll be interesting 
Um, the strides Charlie McAvoy has made has made me more comfortable with letting Krug walk or trading his rights or whatever. I mean, McAvoy was an absolute workhorse in the playoffs, and I think he has to keep taking those steps because he is your number one defenseman as of right now. So he'll get power play time. Um, but on the back end, the Bruins go as far as McAvoy goes, I think. That's a great way to put it. I think McAvoy obviously is their guy. You also mentioned, uh, you know, his – production alongside Chara. I think his production is going to be so much better and he's going to, you're going to see a much different Charlie McAvoy right. with Matt Grizzlick when they, when they move Grizzlick up to pair with him. I think the other great thing about Chara coming back, you're right about Bruins or bust. I don't see Chara, you know, going to Tampa Bay or going to Vegas or going to, you know, one of these random, you know, one of these other teams. Right. I just can't, I, I don't think he'd ever leave. Um, but for, um, you know, if you gave him one and a half million to be your third pairing guy, yeah, limit his minutes. Yeah, limit your his yeah. minutes, and I think that'll be the best way to kind of let him go. Yeah, and to be on to be on the penalty kill. I mean, I still trust Chara a ton in his own zone and, and on the penalty kill and and out in six on five situations and shutdown situations. You know, do I want Chara breaking the puck out? Not no. really. Do I want Chara in the offensive zone? Not really. And I think the Bruins know that, and you saw that in the postseason where they were really just using him in certain scenarios. For one and a half million to still be the captain to still be that presence, yes. I mean, why? Why not? And it's and almost think, a no-brainer where people are going to be like, "Wait, why?" You know and, what and I mean? Then, like, you're you're exactly. always going to get those people that are like, "Bergeron deserves the C," and like, you know, those Twitter accounts who just say it's just it's it's literally a no-brainer. Shelter him, limit his minutes. He will still like you need you still need him. I think in some kind of a role to help McAvoy make this next step. And I think the other thing is like, okay, so Chara goes, who's your, what's your left side? I mean, really like Grizzlick is your first left shot defenseman. And then what Lazan, John Moore. I mean, you really trust that left side to be us, you know, go for a cup. I mean, you need someone reliable at least on, the, you know, somewhere in there that's had some, you know, that has a track record. That's why I think the Bruins do have to go out and sign a top four uh, or trade for a top four left shot defenseman. Imagine uh, Alex Petrangelo in Boston. That, so that's an interesting one. Um, I think he's too much money. Yep. But it would be very interesting. It would be pretty nice. Very interesting. But again, it comes down to that. Is the, is, is, do you, is he going to be worth it in year six or seven of that deal? Um, I don't know. I, think- I, I ultimately go goal scoring. Like, there's so many problems in the top six when that second line goes quiet. Like, Jake DeBrusque has been in trade, trade bait rumors, I guess. Um, I ultimately go goal scoring, but, man, would Alex Petrangelo look good in Boston? Look, would look great. I agree with you on the goal scoring. I also think if you had to pick between Petrangelo and Krug, I think you'd have to pick Petrangelo just because he's a little bit better two-way. Yeah. And I think it, his, his game will age better. Than Krug's will. I yeah, don't know. Yeah, if the money that... was the same, I'd probably go to Petrangelo, but that's that's tough. It's tough, and it's the fact that it's even close is crazy. Yeah. That goes to show you what Krug's done in Boston. Um, but Petrangelo would be very interesting. I don't think he comes to the Bruins. I don't think they actually go for him just because the money is not great. But um, like weirdly enough, I feel like the Bruins would have had a better chance at signing Petrangelo than bringing back Krug. You know what I mean? Just like from where they are in their careers. Like, Petrangelo obviously took a cup from Boston, and, like, maybe he's like, oh, they're very close to winning. Go to a winning team. I don't know. I think I think the scenarios – like, I brought this up with Taylor Hall the other day. Taylor Hall has been on so many bad teams that I think he would take less money, as crazy as that sounds, to play with the Bruins. So, Taylor Hall is an interesting one. We're all over I, the place. My, my brain is just going No, it is, but I think it's good because it's transitioning to good free agent talk. Um, I think with Taylor Hall, it's sort of like that Jerome McGinley thing where you could take a, maybe he takes a year deal. Now, now is his time to cash in. Like the, now with the NHL free, you, no one wants to touch over 30 free agents. No one wants to touch these older guys who want rightfully so want their money. I mean, Petrangelo wants Roman Yossi like money. Crew wants a ton of money. Taylor Hall is going to presumably want a ton of money. Um, but if you, if you get Hall on a, like just a one year deal, you know, try a one year deal. Hell yeah. I mean, Jesus, you know I mean? That's a legit top six guy. The problem is <clears throat> problem with Hall 
is he's not your top left winger. That's Marshawn. And Marshawn's making, you know, six, 6.125, I think. Which is um, a steal. Steal and a half. Not the best message, though. Right. To then give an outsider like Hall eight million potentially and have him be your second line left winger. So I think David I think, Krejci, I think David Krejci would say yes to that. Krejci would say yes to that in a minute. I think Marsha would say yes to that. I think the whole team would say yes to that. Uh, but I do think it's a little odd with the way the money goes, giving him that, but he deserves it. And it also would help your team out a ton. So I think Hall would be a very worthwhile investment if it's short term, if it's short term. Yeah. The only thing that's like good, I guess, in the scenario is that all teams are in this boat. Like the, the cap is flat for everyone else. I mean, there's a couple teams who like need to get to the floor, like Ottawa. Um, Detroit has some cap space. Like, so there's other teams struggling. So I wonder if the market kind of stalls a little bit because teams will be more hesitant. Obviously you're always going to have a team be like, uh, we're just going to throw money at him because we have it. But I think it'll be interesting to see, I'm not sure if players will be flying off the shelves come October 9th, like right away because of the, the actual cap staying flat. So I wonder if the Bruins maybe have some leeway to like, hey, like if this doesn't work out, we'll go here. Like if this doesn't work out, we have a back. So I've said it like maybe 100 times, but Don Sweeney has his work cut out for him this, oh, this yes. offseason. Uh- Yes, and I think this is. I think it's going to see a lot of trades. This is going to be the off season of trades. There's not the free agent market. I don't think it's going to be as hot. I don't think you know you're going to see teams coming out of the woodwork to go for guys. I think it's going to be few and far between who really dabble in free agency. You're going to get a top, a left, uh, you know, a, a top four left shot defenseman, maybe via free agency, maybe a TJ Brody, maybe a Brendan Dillon, probably via trade though. Um, and same with your top six. You know, I mean, I, I'm so intrigued by Brock Besser. Brock Besser would be awesome with the Bruins. I mean, it would work so well. Right shot, good five-on-five, five, you know, lethal, just young, like absolutely would be an awesome fit next to David Krejci. And a legit top six guy, not one of these fringe top six guys with the Bruins right. keep getting, and they have, you know, Bjork, DeBrusque, Kasha, Richie, so many guys from fringe top six. Besser's legit. Kyle Palmieri would be great. Um, legit top six winger. So you're right. Sweeney's got a lot of work. Um, and it seems that, I mean, who do you think they could potentially, who's a good trade target for you? Um, Bobby Ryan just got bought out. I think he's a good plan B or C. Um, I think he, he'd be cheap one year deal, cheap money, just got bought out. I think maybe that's someone who you could plug in with Krejci and just see how that works. And if not slide him down with coil. Um, there's also a lot of opportunities for younger guys in camp, like back in nine. And I think could be a mainstay. Um, then you have the younger guys who knows what Bjork is going to become um, Seneshin. So like, there's a lot of spots for grabs. And I wonder if Sweeney's like, we're just going to have an internal competition because we have no money. Um, Taylor Hall is my pipe dream. I think if you can get him for good money on a good deal, somehow convince him, um, that's probably my number one. And then the rest is going to be just Don trying to piece things together because you got to pay Grizzlick. Um, DeBrusque is an RFA. Like, I don't think trading Jake DeBrusque right now is in the Bruins' best interest whatsoever. I guess it depends on what you're getting back. Um Trade target wise, I think Patrick Line, it'd be a lot to give up for him, but I think he would fit great with Krejci. So it's just, it's, you're kind of waiting for the first domino to fall. Do you know what I mean? It's like, it is. Because once that one domino falls outside of crew leaving or being traded, um, you kind of know where their direction is going. You get a better sense. Exactly. Yeah. And I feel like right now we don't have a great sense of what they want to do. I also think the only way you trade Jake DeBrusque or Brandon Carlo. Uh, is if you are getting the better player in return. If you can right. definitively say we are getting the better guy, then it's fine. You know, if 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 you still feel you can contend for a cup, yeah, you, know, you can't if, lose that trade. Cannot lose that trade. You cannot give up uh, a guy like Jake DeBrusque, who has the potential for forty goals, or Brandon Carlo, who is your shutdown defenseman of the future. Um, you better be getting someone legitimate and good in return, uh, or, or who is better than Carlo or DeBrusque. Um, I also right. think 
Stadnika is an option for the top six yeah, uh, <laughs> on Krejci's right side. And we keep forgetting about him, but I think he's an option. Um, he showed you could definitely hang with the big boys uh, in the postseason. It's just, again, the, product, the, 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 the production is not guaranteed with any of these young guys. So it's tough to go into a new season, again, with is Anders Bjork going to break out? Is he sure. finally going to produce? You know, is Vakinaina going to make that jump? You know, is, you know, uh, what's the deal with Trent Frederick? You know, is, you know, Kinsenishin or, or maybe Zaboral? Like, you know, it, and it's every year with the, it feels like these young guys, it's like, oh, maybe this year they make the step. And with the Bruins, you know, window closing, if it's not already closed, I feel like we say this every year now, um, you need these young guys to produce. You need guys who are in the lineup who you know can, you know, have the capacity to reach their potential. Bjork, it's funny. The guys like Bjork, you know, Stanika during the postseason, great five on five play, great at generating chances, but the production just really was not there. Isn't there. And it's like, oh, because you know that the shots are solid. Bjork gets a lot of good chances right in front of the net. It's like, oh my God, like this, those, those could just go in and they don't. Uh, but maybe they start to change. Maybe you're right. Um, and maybe they go into next season with Stanika on Crazy's right side. Also, Kasha. You know, Kasha, again, yeah. is one of those fringe guys, though. It's not guaranteed, but I think a full season with Krejci might work out. You know what sucks, too, is that, like, Tampa's one went away from winning the Cup, and they kind of went all in in in, um, the trade deadline. It's like maybe if, like, I know we had to deal Bacchus out. Like, I'm fine with that, doing a a first-round swap and all that, Kasha, um, you know. But it's almost – it's just, like, imagine if Don went out and got, like, Kyle Palmieri at the trade deadline. Maybe the Bruins do a little bit better in the cup run this playoff season. It's, like, I feel like the Bruins are always this close and they're last to the, to the table. Uh, I said this – I've said this a few times now. The Lightning won that series at the trade deadline. Yep. They, they did. I mean, Coleman, Goudreau, they gave up a lot. But you got a legit – But the one went away from the cup. They got a legit third line that's a shutdown crew that generates good scoring chances. They're on the ice for a lot of goals. And they're doing um, it without Steven Stamkos. And they're doing it without Steven Stamkos. Now, granted, they were already better than you. They were already better on paper than you were. They were before the deadline. But the deadline was your chance to go out and uh, acquire guys that would make help you be better. And the Bruins were in on Blake Coleman, I believe. Yep. Um, and they just got, they got beat for it. Uh, but again, Kyle Palmieri would have been better. Uh, you know, they could have done more. They, they could have. And they did a lot in 2019. They went out. They got Charlie Coyle. That's an off-the-board pick. Johansson wasn't. I mean, Johansson Had was chemistry kind of with Coyle. Exactly. And so, uh, you know, they, they should have been more creative with what they did. Nick Ritchie's name was not thrown around a lot. Kasha's was. Kasha's was kind of predictable what they did yeah. there. Ritchie wasn't. That came out of left field completely. When that happened, um, and you screwed it up because Richie was just not your guy. Um, so obviously, like hindsight's twenty twenty, and all of this, like we're talking about, mm. but like I would stomach it so much more with Krug leaving and like how things evolved. If Don kind of went out and like said, "Hey, like we're going for it," you know what I mean? Like I haven't gotten that feeling from Don Sweeney in a long time, and like I said, hindsight's twenty twenty, but like you would stomach a cup run like 2019 like going out swinging if you had those guys I get like for the future whatever you don't want to give up a ton of assets but it's just like it's just the state of the Bruins right now they have nothing to show for it I mean they're one in three in um Stanley Cup finals in the last decade so it's like it's tough to swallow well, there's two reasons. It's one because they, they Sweeney's always emphasized that kind of middle ground of like we're planning for the future, but we're trying to win in the present, and that's great in the regular season, but it's not in the postseason. And on top of that, what scares me is I think they did go all in on this year. I do think they thought Kasha and Richie would be enough. Um, they, I think they really thought that they were going to be pieces that solidified the puzzle, and they were ready to face Tampa in that second round. And I mean, you know, the pandemic didn't help them. But the pandemic didn't help Kudrow and Coleman either. And that worked out fine. Right. So it is kind of alarming that they thought that Kasha and Richie were going to be enough. And I think that's why you have the sentiment coming from them now of like, we do need to look at this roster more closely. Because I do think that, you know, they came in with a technically worse, ro- work, technically worse roster this year because Johansson had left. Um, right. So 
And Olachari had left, 30 goal score in Olachari, or 20 goal score in Olachari. So, uh, insane. It, w- wild. I mean, that it's is just. Good for No, honestly, like, I was so happy to see him just thriving down in Florida. I mean, what a guy. Great for him. Um, Bruins could use that scoring, though. Uh, yeah. But imagine Tori rate, hooking up with Nolachari down in Florida. They're saying it might happen. And they're also, Montreal's been thrown around. I mean, oh, it's, if I see Tori Krug in a Montreal jersey, oh my God, I don't know what I'll do. It would suck. It would be awful. Um, but at any rate, this offseason is going to be wild. Uh, Krug's definitely gone. Um, it's going to be very interesting to see what they do. Marina, before I let you go, is there anything you would like to plug? Um, you can follow me on Twitter. Oh, I changed my Twitter handle. This is weird. I know. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter at Marina K Mar M A H E R. Um, follow my podcast Marina's Morning Skates. My blog is Brussels I think that's it. Wow, what a that's so weird. I haven't said that like out loud for the first time. That's Welcome. Crazy. There you go. Did now? Did you did you lose Twitter verification because of that? No, I ne- I was never verified. I thought you were. That's why when I when I went to see your Twitter account, I was like. Did she lose verification nope, for changing her? Nope, never been verified. Okay, it's okay. It was fun, though, when everyone verified was kicked off Twitter. Uh, yeah, remember kinda, that? We got to have free reign. We were like, hey, we can do what we want. It's like kind of <laughs> the inmates run the asylum. Like, hey, we're the, we're the, we're the leaders on here now. Uh, but hey, anyway, Marina, thank you for joining. Uh, and for stealing this media, I'm Evan Marinovsky. You Bruinsby listeners, have a great rest of your week.